guys, welcome back to Metal Tips and Tricks. One of my favorite exercises in the shop is to turn the handle on the milling machine to raise and lower that table. One of my favorite things to do, but let's say it's not your favorite thing to do. What if there was a quicker way to do it, an adapter that would raise and lower it quickly? Well, let me show you one. Now, you've seen similar ideas like this with the drill. Very quick, very efficient, and without cords, it works excellent. But if you look at the normal handle and the geometry that's involved in making it, it's very complicated. Tubal Kane actually did a video on how to make one of these adapters doing this whole system, but it's very complicated. Even he said it's really not worth the time and the effort to do it, but it is a great exercise. You can buy one of these adapters with this type of pin configuration right off of eBay for I think it's about 35, 40 bucks, somewhere in that range. It's a great deal, especially when you think it's gonna take more than an hour to build one of these. But I came up with a different way of doing it. Instead of making all these individual teeth, which is very time consuming, actually going in with brass pins to make this work. And it works really, really well. Another thing I did on this design is, if you look at the one Tubal Kane made, and also the one you can buy, they're a big, heavy, bulky piece of steel. Well, I have eliminated most of the steel off of this and have made it quite light. I wanna talk about the material. This is just gonna be simple cold rolled stock. We're gonna start out this piece here is an inch and three quarters, and what we're trying to do is basically get the same diameter here, which this is about an inch and five eighths. And we want to just make sure that we have enough material because when we drill these pins, we don't want them to be too close. So let me take you over to the lathe and show you what we need to do to prepare this for the very beginning here. And we're going to simply chuck this in. We're going to face off both sides we're also going to center drill both sides, but one side we're going to drill in a hole an inch and five eighths, and that's going to get us ready for the milling operation. We're going to now drill the five eighths inch hole and what we're going to do is we're going to step up, I don't know, this looks like a quarter inch, not quite a half inch, and then go to the final five eighths. The hole has to be a total of one and a half inches deep. There we go, now we're ready to head over to the milling machine and take on the next operation. Now, the next step we have to do after the lathe is we have to get these holes drilled into this material and it's very easy to do. We need to first mark this and the way we're gonna do it is we're gonna paint the surface, slide our part on using the original shaft to line everything up and put that into place. Now some things you got to be careful about is when you take this out, there's a square key on the shaft that could fall out. I've got it lined up to the top so when I take this on and off it's very easy. So just be careful when you do that. Another thing is you may want to polish up the ends here. Just put on a piece of sandpaper, flatten them out so there's no burrs to interfere with the process. We're going to simply take some paint, put it on there. We want to make sure it stays wet because it's going to stamp the pattern over. Reach for the part, slide it right on. Get a good transfer of paint. There we go perfect stamp right there. And what we're going to use 
the stamp for is we're going to drill right in between those points. So let me show you how we're going to do that on the mill. We now have this marked and stamped so we know exactly where we want to drill our holes. First of all, we're going to start out with a V-block milling machine. We're going to line it up. Very simple. Now, I've got a brass pin in here, and it's the exact same 3 16 inch brass that I'm using to make the final part. And it makes it for lining everything up just right. It makes it a little better than a drill bit. So we've got that lined up. I also have a stop in place to keep the V-block from moving out of alignment. We're going to bring in our part. And this is where the magic happens. And it's pretty simple. All we want to do is bring the brass into place and kind of move it around a little bit. We don't want to have it too far in because it'll be too far, it'll be too tight. If we have it too far out, well, you can see right here that the brass would run out the side and we don't want to have that, although it could be kind of a cool effect. Well, we'll think about that later. Um, so I want to make sure I've just got enough room. I want to have room to the left and the right. Just a little margin of error. And I also want to make sure, again, that the brass isn't too far out and not set up correctly. Okay, we're going to lock the table, and we have our first hole ready to go. Switch out to the bit. This is a number 10 that's a wire size, and it's just a little larger than the 3 16 inch brass. And the reason I'm doing that is I'm going to solder these into place. Now, the original one that I did here actually was used, I used Loctite, and well, they've moved and raised, and I don't know why. I may have made the holes too tight, and there's not enough of Loctite in there to hold it. So you could try the Loctite. I just know I wasn't successful. So I'm going to actually use solder. Double check. Tighten it up. We're going to drill these in three quarters of an inch, set my stop, a little bit of oil, and start drilling. I think that worked out really, really well. It actually looks something like um, a revolver. Now these pins will stick right into here. You can see there's a little bit of slop. They're designed that way for the additional solder, making room for that. And now I want to test this out. I'm going to put a bunch of pins in here, fit it on there, and see how well I did. I've cut the brass pins so they just fit in here nice and easy. Get a little extra length in there so I can trim them off later on the lathe. And we're just going to slide this on as a test, see how it lines up. Lines up perfect. Now, let's say one of these pins were out of alignment and we didn't know which one it is, of course. Well, what I would do is I'd take out all the pins and I would just leave in a few, see how it fits. If it doesn't bind, I'd add another one, and I'd find out which one is out of alignment, and then I would just mark it, and later on, I would just file a little bit, put a little flat side on it, and give it enough room to fit on there. But in this case, it worked out really, really well. So now, we're going to solder these pins into place. Mm -hmm. 